Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. This video is part of the How to Survive Medical School series and today we're going to be talking about how best to learn on the wards. So we all start off really enthusiastically, you know, when we first get into clinical school. For me, it was four years into my university degree, you know, we were finally let loose on the wards and I was super excited about it. I was like, yes, I get to see real patients. This is what being a doctor is actually about. But very quickly, me and literally all of my friends, we all realized that actually being on the wards, if you don't think about it or don't actively kind of think, try and make most of it, it's actually quite an inefficient way to learn. Like I'd often find myself being in hospital for the first few weeks from nine o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the evening. And at the end of it, I'd kind of think, well, I don't really know what I've learned today. I'm not really sure what I was supposed to learn. And objectively, if I'd spent that eight hours reading a textbook instead or doing active recall and spaced repetition or just doing some past papers, I would have got far more, more knowledge into my brain than I did just on that whole day spent on the wards. And for me, like for the first few weeks, I used to feel incredibly guilty about having this, having this mindset. And I, I used to think that I was doing something wrong and I'd feel really guilty that I was going home at lunchtime. And then I spoke to a few seniors in, in the years above and they laughed at me at how naive I was that I thought that being on the wards was actually a useful experience. And their whole advice was basically, you know, just go in, get what you need to gain from the experience and then go home and enjoy your university experience not being in the hospital. I think that advice is probably too much on the extreme end. I think that being on the wards is genuinely a useful experience, but it's important to actually make the most of it. And that is what this video is about. So we are gonna be hearing from a bunch of my friends who are gonna be sharing 11 tips on how to learn on the wards. Uh, everyone has kind of different experiences of medical school and so, Throughout the series, I wanted to actually give the perspective of various medical students who are now junior doctors and the advice that they offered. I don't just want you to think that the way I approach medical school is like, you know, the only way to approach medical school. So yeah, here are some of my friends giving 11 tips on how you can learn on the wards. And of course, everything is gonna be timestamped in the video description and in a pinned comment. So feel free to skip around the video if you feel like it, but yeah. Here we go. How to learn on the wards. So I think the first thing you have to acknowledge is that this is a really different type of learning than you'll ever have done before. And so it's completely okay if you feel at the start that you have absolutely no idea what you're doing. No one expects you to be able to do it from the, from the start. Um, it's something you definitely pick up. The key things are to stick with junior doctors, um, find a nice F1 or F2 doctor who's willing to have you tag along with them um, and often you'll find that they, they are really willing to teach you and to explain what they're doing. Um, consultants and senior doctors are often really, really busy and have got to go off to theatre or clinic. Um, so sticking with the juniors is probably a, a good bet. And also the nurses are fantastic. So the nurses on the ward, especially like the matrons, the senior sisters who run the ward, know a huge amount and will be able to, to teach you um, so much about how the ward works and how to manage patients on a day-to-day -day basis. If you feel like you've been on the ward for a long time and you just kind of sat there not really doing anything, it's completely okay to leave. Um, there's no point in staying there if there's not really anything going on and you're just sat in the office. You can make constructive use of your time, go to the library or go and do some reading or go and practice some clinical skills in the lab. Um, so don't be afraid to to go and do something else if you feel like you're not learning, not not gaining something from the time. I've always found it's best to go with someone else myself. Um, I think my most productive time on the ward was when I, um, me and, and one guy who were quite close friends, uh, went every day, would go to the ward round, different ones, and that, because they were, they were medical ward rounds on a medical ward, uh, we would be finished by about 11, 12 o'clock. We'd go and grab a quick lunch, let the patients have their protective meal time, and then we'd come back. And uh, both of us would have found at least one patient that was interesting from the ward round um, for each of us to go and see. So, and we'd do it properly, OSCE style. Um, we'd give them a little brief history of what's gone on, kind of a vignette, and then the other person would examine them fully, you know, like a full cardiovascular. We'd come out, they'd debrief, and we'd talk through what kind of the consultant had talked through us. Uh, and we'd just pass one or, one or two patients to each other and then we'd go, and that'd be, that was a really efficient way. We were done by kind of 3 p.m. latest to, uh, and you know, no point hanging around longer than that. I think one point to note that's really important is that hospitals are designed to treat patients. They're not designed to teach medical students. So therefore it's really important to be proactive uh, with your learning in order to get the most out of your time on the wards. One thing that is important is to always have an objective and know what it is that you want to do on any particular day. So maybe one day um, you might decide that you're going to practice taking bloods, 
or you're going to practice um, taking histories or examining certain types of signs. And obviously there's lots of general stuff that you can learn on the wards and you could go in with a, I think what a lot of people do is with like quite a passive approach and just think, okay, I just want to learn medicine today. And you go in and just try and passively absorb things. But I think it's useful to actively have a approach that you want to take um, and things that you want to learn. So therefore, what I found useful was always like the night before any, any, um, any day of work, I would think of about five or six priorities, just write them down on a bit of paper in my pocket. And then when I was on the wards, I'd be thinking, okay, how can I achieve these aims that I've set? How can I achieve these objectives? So if it was like, okay, I want to practice taking bloods today, or I want to learn about liver function tests today, then it would be like, okay, are there any patients with a liver pathology on the ward? And then going and uh, talking to them, um, maybe taking a history, having a look at their blood tests, looking at the liver function tests, how they've changed, um, what the different markers mean, and if they've gone up, if they've gone down, why that um, is the case and what kind of pathology it suggests they might have um, and talking to people about that and really getting an understanding on that for example um, or if you wanted to practice taking bloods then going um, and maybe following the phlebotomist or just asking the F1 that day are there any bloods that need taking um, do you mind if I go and take them and just doing lots back to back to back uh, I think it's also quite useful um, so that's the first the first thing is yeah just having an objective is very useful and important. I think tagging on to good teachers is like a really good bit of advice that I got. Some of the people that you're working with will be very interested in teaching, others won't be as interested and they're more focused on just getting the work done. But someone who's interested in teaching and who is good at teaching is absolutely invaluable. So if you find someone who's like that, just tag onto them and basically milk them for all they're worth. Like try and get them to teach you in off moments on the ward round, in the afternoon, ask if they can go through a certain topic and just try and absorb everything that they say um, and learn from that. So that I find is incredibly useful and that can make or break a placement. Just having one doctor who's keen to teach and is experienced in teaching and is good at teaching can make a huge difference. You can learn so much. So the third point I would say is don't be afraid to leave um, some sort of teaching uh, experience if you're not getting a lot out of it. I think it's easy to spend a lot of time on the wards like you could go in solidly from nine till five and feeling good and feeling like you've been productive but actually it might be that there was a lot of downtime which you didn't really get a lot out of and I think the first point having an objective can help because in those downtimes you can go away and do something but it's also really useful to have in your mind that if you're not getting a lot out of it it's not wrong to leave like if you went in for the morning and you have a realistic idea that there's not going to be much opportunity for teaching maybe the doctors are really busy that day maybe there's just not many interesting patients left you've examined all the patients on the ward it's completely reasonable to leave and it's the same for clinics it's the same for theatres um, sometimes surgeons or doctors might make you want to stay or kind of put pressure on you to be there but at the end of the day you're responsible for your own learning and your own time so I think it's completely reasonable to just get up and leave if you're not getting something out of it because you're there to learn at the end of the day so so I'd also say one thing that is useful to really make the most of your time is to always be relating what you're learning on the wards to your reading. And this can kind of be done in both directions. So for when you're on the ward um, and you see some interesting condition and you, you learn about you know a few different patients that came in that day, it's really useful to go home and at the end of the day, spend a bit of time just reading about those conditions and consolidating and understanding the patient's case, like why were they given this particular treatment? What was it about this presentation that led the consultant to come to this diagnosis? And really understand the rationale behind it. And then you're much more likely to remember it longer because that experience where you see the patient and talk to them, it kind of, I've heard it described as like, it gives you like a hook to hang the information off. It's, it's, um, it's much more like to stick in your memory. If you can picture a face and, and um, picture a person's story, then that can be a great way to remember the important clinical information that you need to know so next time you see a patient maybe with similar sort of pattern of symptoms you can think back and remember that particular patient and be like well, what happened then okay the consultant asked about this important question um, and they were thinking about these sorts of treatments and then you can use that information later and i think it's also useful to go the other direction and use your reading on the wards so when you see a patient coming, let's say Parkinson's disease, and there's a patient's coming with Parkinson's, and you've done some reading about Parkinson's, then before you even know anything about the patient, sometimes it's easy to mentally go through, or sometimes like I just grab out a bit of paper and write down 
what do I know about Parkinson's? What would I be thinking about in this patient's case? If I was taking the history, what kind of questions would I ask? What examination findings would I expect? What kind of treatments could they be on? And then look, going ahead and looking at the notes and seeing, okay, so they're taking this medication, which I know is like a first line or a second line drug, or oh, they're taking this combination, they're taking this dose, so that's a, that suggests that maybe they've had Parkinson's for a long time. Um, so when I examine them, they might have strong signs of Parkinson's, and then you go and see them, and it kind of confirms that. And again, that adds this linking element of your learning of bringing the clinical experience and the academic knowledge together, which is really useful. A lot of those ideas that I've just spoken about, um, I've kind of written down, I think maybe a little bit more clearly than I'm able to say them right now um, in this book that I published uh, last year. Um, it's called The Modern Medical Student Manual and all those ideas are covered in chapter three, which is really about how to make the most of your time on the wards and how to um, essentially do all of the points that I said, but just explored in a bit more depth. I'm gonna be honest with you, being on the wards can be incredibly dull sometimes. Like, obviously it it's not um, that we don't appreciate the opportunity to be there and be able to learn, uh, but with the doctors really busy sorting out the patients, you know, you're not their priority. And so unless you are really proactive in finding ways to learn, it's quite easy to go through a whole day just learning nothing or very, very little. I would really advise being proactive and uh, you know, trying to get up the motivation to actually engage actively. Um, so on the ward round, rather than just kind of wander around following after some doctors not really knowing the acronyms they're using or the medical terms they're talking about or the investigations, all of that sort of thing, just make sure you are learning actively. So whether that means noting down the acronyms to look up yourself later because you don't know the doctors that well or just getting up the guts to say Sorry, would you mind um, telling me what an AVM is? All of those things will make sure you're actually getting something out of the ward round actively. So another great way to get stuff out of the ward round is to be helpful. Because actually, as soon as you start being like, oh, are there any jobs uh, that you need doing that I could help you out with? To the junior doctors, that's when they think, oh, this person is, you know, useful and helpful to me. I want to help them back. Um, and that, that's when they start thinking, oh, maybe I could um, give them a little teaching session on fluids, because I know quite a lot about fluids. Or they think, actually, um, I'll keep an eye out for patients for that medical student who was here yesterday, because they were really good, really helpful. So I'll think of patients that they can see today. So learning on the wards. I think that learning on the wards, if we take a more general view of it, that just means learning any clinical experience. I think it can be summed up in one word, which is initiative. An initiative just means that you take ownership of your learning and you put yourself out there and you risk, you know, you, you, you make the extra effort to, to push yourself into the team, not in a way that's intrusive of anything, but in a way that actually helps the team to function and helps the team to actually get the clinical work done. Because at the end of the day, that's what you are going to be doing as a junior doctor. So what I mean by this, um, take initiative. So for example, if you're on a ward round, um, ask the FI1 nicely to print a list for you. And then with the list, you can go around with the patients. You, you look at the medical history, you are able to, to look at the bloods and see if there's anything wrong with it. And then actually work, use your clinical reasoning to think about what issues the patient needs to needs next. For example, if a patient is, if you hear the team talking about a patient needing to go home the next day, then it's a discharge planning in place. Where's the patient going to? Does he need any kind of social input? Any, um, and is he going to be discharged in the care home, have the care home? Um, taken him in, does he need a, a physiotherapy or occupational therapist review? All these other things that, that are associated with the discharge of the patient, you can begin to be thinking about them and then seeing whether the team has actually reflected that in their notes. If they have reflected it in their notes already, then well and good for you because this, you know, this process of running through that thought process in your mind is helpful in and of itself. But if not, then you can be helpful because you can tell the team, oh, do we need to do this as well? And then sometimes, you might pick up on something that they might have forgotten, which is, and then that actually makes you feel really good because, you know, extra points for, for medical, like if you're a medical student and you've contributed something to the team, then that makes you feel so, so happy that you've, that you've contributed something. But, you, you know, if not, if you if you say something wrong, that's fine too, because the, I'm quite sure that the, that the doctors will appreciate your willingness to get involved and help. And they'll say, no, actually, we, we're not gonna look to do this because this and that reason and so on and so forth. That, I, think that, I think there are lots more examples you can, you can run with, with this concept of initiative. If you're in a, in a clinic, 
with the with the consultant. One of the things which I do when I'm in a clinic with a, a consultant, it's just a consultant and me. After I introduce myself, you know, I take a seat. Usually these these chairs are placed in a very obscure part of the room in a corner. And that's just because without any medical students there, the chairs need to live in some really obscure part of the of the room, such that they're out of the way of everybody. But you're a medical student and you're there as well to to participate in that clinical encounter. So what I'll do is that I'll take the chair and actually just even move it a few steps, like five steps forward, so that I'm more in the sight lines of the patient as well as the consultant. And I feel like, and, and that kind of puts me into a position where I'm part of that clinical encounter as well. I don't mean to be obtrusive, uh, to be intrusive or, or to obstruct any, anything that's going on, but I just want to put myself into that clinical encounter. And then after that, each time when the patient leaves the room, I will actually get up from my chair and go into the patient's chair and sit and face the consultant such that I can see the kind of notes that the consultant is making, hear him dictate, and also maybe look at the file for the next patient all in a way that, you know, doesn't kind of, is not overbearing, obviously, because you don't want to be a complete nuisance to the consultant, but in a way that actually helps everyone, you know. So, and then from there, I can take it, I can discuss with the consultant about the previous patient, ask him a few questions or talk about the next one. And, you know, this, I think at the end of the day, what this really does for you is that it makes you feel part of the whole process. And as a medical student, that's what you want to feel. Once you're part of the process, then you feel ownership of it. You feel that it gives you a dopamine spike and it encourages you to keep going. Okay, so my number one tip for learning well on the wards is if it's not useful, just go home. <laughs> Like literally. Okay, no, that that's bad. Okay. So my number one tip for learning well on the wards is if you're not finding something useful, then try and find like alternative ways to make it more useful. So say you're on a ward round um, and you're being ignored by everyone and you're just kind of following them around. Maybe next time ask the F1 like, oh, um, can I see the notes or like, can I help you do your jobs? Um, or ask the consultant lots of questions so that, you know, you're not just standing there like a lemon, as you would say. Mm. Um, I think one of the things I would say for learning on the wards is that often it's worth sort of sticking around. If you're there and nothing's happening, sometimes in about half an hour, an hour, something exciting will suddenly turn up. Um, often you can end up I, you know, I've had lots of times where I was standing in A&E and it was a slow morning, there was nothing going on and I was thinking, oh, maybe I should go home, maybe my time would be more useful elsewhere. And then I stuck around for about half an hour, 45 minutes, and suddenly a load of patients came through the door. I was very useful at um, taking blood or um, doing various jobs and clerking patients in. Um, and I had, at the beginning of that day, thought that I might just give up and go home. but if you stick at it, sometimes um, sometimes new people will turn up and exciting things will happen and you'll actually learn more than you, you thought you might. Another thing I would say about being on the wards and that I've learned over the past few years is that you should have a go at things that you don't necessarily want to do. Um, so there's lots of things that I might shy away from. I know that I'm a bit more nervous about doing practical skills like taking blood, doing cannulas um, and over the past few weeks I've really tried to push myself in our final apprenticeship block to volunteer for things that I would normally shy away from and let someone else take um, take the lead on. Sometimes it backfires and you don't do that well and you feel like you've sort of failed in that instance, but often it actually is worth focusing on things that you're finding more difficult, the things that you're struggling to get yourself to do and to get experience in. And it, once you do them and build up that um, confidence in yourself, it actually makes it so much easier the next time around. The main thing about learning on the boards is that you need to make a decision for yourself about what you want to learn that day. It's really hard uh, if you're waiting just for somebody to make that decision for you and you might find that things don't happen. But if you say to yourself, right, I want to take a history from a patient this day, and then you can say that to the junior doctors that are working around you, they'll help you make it happen. Uh, so yeah, that would be my, my main tip. I don't find wards a very time efficient way to learn things and I often will come away from a day on the wards and thinking, you know, what did I actually get from that? Um, I could have read X, Y, Z fact in a textbook in a tenth of the time. But I think what you do find is that certainly when you sit exams or when people ask you clinical things, you actually take for granted what you have picked up on the wards. And although you may not um, see sort of in the short term what you've picked up, 
overall we are all much better clinically for going on the wards and integrating that as part of our learning. So even if you're like me and you don't find them on a day-to-day -day basis, a nine to five ward shift is a particularly good way to learn loads of stuff. I do think we're better off for doing at least a bit of it. Aside from that, I think it's good to be realistic when you're on the wards and don't be afraid to acknowledge when it's not being useful for you anymore. If you're not getting attention and you've, you know, you've tried to be proactive, you've tried to make things happen and be useful, but you just don't think anything's really going on. There's no shame in saying, I'm gonna go and do some work somewhere else now. You don't have to be there for the purposes of just being there and showing face. I think a lot of doctors who are reasonable would accept that. So there is certainly a lot to be gained from going on the wards, but you don't have to sort of stick to a really rigid timetable. So yeah, that was 11 tips from various friends about how you can learn on the wards. I 100% agree with everything that they've all said. I think if I were to do medical school or rather clinical school again, I would be much more intentional about this time that I'm actively spending in the hospital. I would go in with a specific goal in mind, you know, like after the first few months, like I think the first few months, you know, just being exposed to the experience of what it's like to actually be in a hospital and talking to people, I think that's immensely valuable. But beyond that point, when it starts to become kind of when we ha when we start to have to take our learning into our own hands, then at that point, I think it's really useful to have some kind of aim when, when going on to the wards. Regardless of what medical school you're at, you know, whether you're Oxford or Cambridge or literally any other medical school in the world, you're probably going to complain about the lack of teaching, especially with clinical school. You might even complain about the lack of syllabus. If you or your friends are complaining about lack of teaching or lack of syllabus, don't worry. This is an experience that literally every medical student in the world that I've ever spoken to has had that they think their university is the only university where the teaching is bad or where they don't give you a syllabus. But don't worry, this is experience across the board. It's all very normal. But you know, the whole point of clinical school is once you're like that age where you're actually seeing the patients and stuff, it is kind of down to us to put the learning into our own hands and to figure out what we need to do for ourselves. It would be nice if our medical schools held our hand throughout the whole process, but unfortunately that's never the case. And yeah, like all these tips aside, what I would say above all is make sure you try and enjoy the experience of being in hospital. You are only a student once, unless you do multiple degrees or unless you fail exams, but for most people, we're only students once. And I think back to my time at clinical school and I'm glad that I actually had a really good time. And I don't think if I'd spent twice as much time on the wards as I did, that I would have actually gained anything particularly extra. I don't think it would have had much of an impact on my life. But I do think that if I'd spent significantly less time on the wards than I did, then I probably would be less of a good doctor than I am now. I hope I'm a reasonable doctor these days. So yeah, that brings us to the end of this video. I will look, link a playlist over here that has some of our other videos in the How to Survive Medical School series. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.